back again with another not live stream. Yes, I said not live stream. Uh, I don't have any other intros <laughs> if you happen to even pay attention to them. <clears throat> they say at the top live stream starting soon that <coughs> hopefully soon I will get <coughs> figured out what's wrong with OBS and why I can't stream. I can record, but I can't stream. Anyway, I'm going to go back to the desktop here and uh, let's make sure. Our video is making, so I'll close that app. Um, okay, so my uh, updates on my NetPro Max Fedora 29 server. NetPro Max is the brand of the machine that it's on. It's a it's a, it's a single core Celeron 2.8 gigahertz, I think. With um, yeah, the IBM's 2.5, and I think this one's 2.8, and it has two gig of RAM. Um, anyway, I went ahead and ran the updates, uh, manually from the remote, uh, here, and, uh, from the remote admin app, and what, uh, hoping that it will fix my new kernel, you know, after I updated to a new kernel, it wouldn't boot, but, uh, I did read, well, I read some things that fixed it, it th th this one, uh, these particular people, you know, on Fedora 28 had this kind of kind of problem, and uh, they uh, ran some commands to fix uh, to uh, re. I think it was just like update grub command. I think is basically what it was, but and that's what it turned out. It was something to do with grub in there. So I'm hope. Well, I'm hoping this fixes it, but if it doesn't, then I'll have to try that. Um, just went blank as to the other things. But anyway, I'll take them one step at a time. Let's see if this uh, this works. So I'm going to get on. Yeah, I'm not going to hit the reboot button there, I don't think. Or should I? Let's see. I'll have to go log in with the password. on the, If I log in over there, I'll have to log in with the password. But otherwise, if I hit reboot, I have to hurry up and come over here, change the, to the tablet, and then change my KV, with my KVM switch to get on the machine. I guess I can do that. I've done it before. So, Harry. Oh, I'm going to hit reconnect first. Oh. I thought that said reboot ever since I saw it. Uh, well, since I, no point in logging into the remote admin console, I'll just go log in over there. So, let's just go get on the uh, camera. Yeah, now I'm on the machine, <clears throat> and uh, let's see. Uh, I'll go ahead and try reboot command, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to log in this route to do that because I'm not logged in uh, at all. Actually, I know I can't. Because you first, you get if you're gonna, you gotta, you gotta log in before you can do anything. Yeah, I was just trying. I was just going to click that little blue button to avoid having to type the password. But heck, I'm going to. Okay, I, I, I got it right. I was afraid I'd get it wrong. But uh, if I'm going to have to type it, I might as well type it there. Now then. And I'll be ready to see whatever goes on. Maybe, yeah, reboot nows. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. You, a lot of. When the bane, I think all you have to do is type reboot. But in here. I'm going to hit a key on the keyboard so we can see. Now, this is shutting down right now. This is not, you know, it hasn't, it's starting reboot. Yeah, now we're, we're shutting everything down. Now we're getting ready to reboot. And I've got my, uh, one of my cameras, my phone cameras ready to take a picture if I get that error again. I'll take a, you know, a still shot of it so I can have it to read because I couldn't remember the exact error. <clears throat> and I don't, if I ever took a picture of it, I don't know where it is. Okay, now here's my kernel. Oh, I've got a whole a new kernel after all, I think. I've got two old kernels now, so if this one doesn't boot, then I'll have two to fall back on. I was afraid I was going to... One person said they, they they updated their machine hoping it would, you know, uh, hoping it would fix it, and, uh, oh, it's working. Woohoo! 
and uh, it broke their their old their, they broke their old old colonel, and so then they were down to the uh, rescue you know consoles all they had left, but it's okay. Yeah, it's already got past the point of where I was having problems. I think yeah, it's looking good. The uh, Now I don't know if that's other kernel still works. If if it I don't we'll see I ran that command in the previous video I ran a command to check for broken packages. It returned no broken packages. As a matter of fact, I don't remember what the command was. It's real short and easy actually. Uh one thing failed to start. Uh let me read it. Okay, it's up. Awesome. So all I had to do is fiddle around and wait for a reboot. <laughs> I mean for an update. <laughs> I didn't see one that I thought was going to fix it for sure, but I didn't see one that said kernel update. I w well, I didn't, you know, I wasn't looking for the right thing. I should have been looking for a grub update, now that I think about it, because uh, evidently that's what the problem was. Uh, so let me get this. Uh, I don't need to take a picture of anything, so I need to. Oh, God damn it. I went ahead and put. I gave myself enough length so that I could, uh, I had open camera all opened up. Oh, and now I just took a picture by accident. How funny. I was trying to switch it back to video because I like to leave the app in video mode. Now let's make sure that if I do want, yeah, if I do want to use my mic, it will be working. Anyway, the wires were getting tangled up. Normally, I have the camera in the bag around my waist, and I only have just a little bit of cable going down here to the bag, and so I don't get tangled up in things so much. But uh, this one, I didn't want to take that off of there because I don't. That, that's that camera. See, with that, that's my selfie stick. See, I don't really use it for that. I use it to, you know, carry it around like that. But. Uh, works pretty well and and it uh, it's just the right size that I can clip it in a microphone stand my the clip mic type of microphone clip on a mic stand and uh, I don't normally use it with audio though so I don't normally have that hanging out there uh, <clears throat> I don't like that hanging out there so far it, you know it's really easy to break what you'd end up doing is breaking the connector in the phone but uh, as long as you know I'm not running around and stuff, I, I'll be all right. I, that's one reason why it's laying there on the count table like that, so that it's got something to keep it from being able to break it, even if you slammed down on it or something. You know. Only thing is, I don't. I had it in a place. There we go. The wires are uh, getting in the way of me getting to my mouse. There. Okay, now, um, I think right now, oh, let's see. Yeah, okay, it's working. I'll get a little echo. You know, you know, I'm not getting as bad of an echo with it plugged into this one. As when it's not as much delayed as it was on camera three. Camera three might not have uh, been working as well as I thought it was. Okay, so, <clears throat> now there's nothing to see over there on the... <coughs> <coughs> over there on the uh, <clears throat> um, you know terminal window of that except for that I could have logged in to the XSE desktop yeah I, I want to still want to get a graphical boot screen g working I think I know what I can do I think I can install a graphical boot app a different one than the normal one they use because for some reason I installed the uh, far as I know I, best I can get it I did everything I, I can find on how to make it a fedora server uh, you know work with a, a desktop a, a GUI graphical desktop and uh, I uh, I have to type start X. If I type start X on the command line, then it, let me reload this because it's been rebooted. Okay, yeah, it still sees it. If I type, uh, st I can type start X on the command line and it'll start up the uh, 
graphical interface. Um, oops. Before I even log in there, let's go check our website. That's actually... <sighs> That's the whole goal here, and what I'm going to do, it's it's 10 o'clock and I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed for long, and uh, I'll just leave it running. And then tomorrow, hopefully I'll get back on, get get it straightened out, get it all up and going good enough that I can uh, put it out in the, back out in the garage where I won't have to listen to it and I won't have to deal with the heat that the extra machine makes. Is that one that, yeah, there's something crazy about this website tonight. That don't, there it goes. Please try again in a few minutes. It just, it was worked once for me and then it, it quit working. They must be doing some maintenance on their site or something. It wouldn't come in at all for a while there. <clears throat> Let's see. Uptime robot and. Can't remember the other one now. I don't think I've been there recently enough to see it in any uptime role. Mo, uh, Monstatic. That's it. Got to at least know the first couple of letters. <clears throat> okay. My, uh, so, oh, I'm still signed in. Checkpoints. Okay. Now that one says it's been down for seven minutes. I don't know why it would be down, but bishopco.com is up. Click on it, that'll take you to the website. There you go. What if I click on this one? The thing is, see, uh, that's on my local network, so it could still be down to the Internet. That's the thing. These tell you whether they're up or down to, you know, the Internet. But I still, I still, um, that's still live. I've still, uh, my, uh, what well, this was my forwarding service I was using. Right now, I've got it forwarded by go through to GoDaddy, and I'm skipping that and going straight to the website. Uh, only thing is, well, what? I can't remember. I do. I well, that one that's not that's not working. The other monitor it keeps saying that DawnSongs.com uh, is down all the time, but then. Over here on this one, it says it's up, and if I just go to it, like I just did, it's up. It doesn't show donsalms.com. It shows where it really is at bishopco.com, and I, what I'd have to do is go into GoDaddy, and I think I will go ahead and do that. I kind of debated about it because, um, well, when you click, let's click around on the side and see that everything's working. When you click on links back to, uh, <coughs> that's loud enough. When you click on links back to, uh, how loud do I have that? I had it kind of loud. <clears throat> Back to um, bishopco.com. This is my music website. I recorded two albums over the years, and I have them on here. And you can download, listen, listen to them, download them for free if you want. Um, <clears throat> but when you go, like, say, bishopco.com, it would still show Dawn songs, and I didn't really like that. But, I mean, it's one thing or another. You know, you, you, it's, a, it's a trade off of not perfectly desirable things either way. Okay, so let's go log back in here. Ah. Hitting the, I felt my finger hit the space key, so I figured it was wrong. So I started over. Okay. <clears throat> Some other program is currently using the package manager. Hmm. Oh, software update. So that was the last place I was at. Let's go back to the. It's. I guess that's what it does. It goes to the last place you place you were at. So, um, just the, the main page there, it uh, gives you graphical readout of what's going on and <clears throat> says there's updates available. Hmm. Well, those can happen automatically at 3 in the morning because I'm going to leave it running. I'll probably just let it do that. It restarted just like it should. Uh, 
no problem. So now I am curious as to that other kernel that wouldn't boot, you know, because this is a new, I've got, a, I'm, I'm almost certain I got a new kernel in that update. Um, let's look through the logs and let's see. Well, the updates will tell us. Okay, yeah, we don't have, <clears throat> that was one thing. I looked at these logs. I forgot to mention that earlier. And I didn't see any uh, logs that were telling me, like, you know, any, uh, well, oh, yeah. Well, there wasn't any broken uh, root, you know, boot, boot error logs or anything. But other than these right here, um, it cursor cannot assign requested address. Arsys log, log D. Too large, reducing. I uh, forgot what that is. Oh, DHC client file, I guess. Failed to start hardware monitoring sensors. Yeah, well, it probably doesn't have what it's looking for is what that is. And then and there's that reboot we just did. Side sedish patch. Sed, sedi, sedish patch. Sedish patch. Is exiting same ones and then <clears throat> what's this yeah oh that one's in there twice too large so that's all I'm getting they don't seem to be a big deal I've looked at them before you can click on them and see exactly what they are where they're located and, um, which can be very helpful if you wanted to try to you know find it out I've done that a couple of times look through these these things to see if I could did some searches and I didn't see anything this one here where did it where is it user lib system D hmm. oh hardware monitors yeah <clears throat> that's probably not fixable I don't think but uh, you might be able to fix that one where it says timeout too large reducing to uh, DHC client. You might be able to edit the files, you know, to just start out with the smaller file, you know. And uh, let's see. storage networking accounts, services, applications. Let's look at the services. <clears throat> And I looked through the services earlier today, and I didn't see much in trouble, which was good. There's something that failed. Let's see. Snapshots. Oh, hardware sensors. Yeah, there's only that one thing that failed. And then, uh, something that, yeah, mask and active dead was one. There's a bunch of things that are dead, but that, that maybe that they've just already ran. They only run one, they either just run on boot or they ran one time on installation or, let's see. If you go through, there's yeah, there's a bunch of inactive deads in there, and then but mask inactive dead that means you don't see it. Up, well, I don't know. You've seen it here, but you don't see it somewhere. <laughs> I actually don't remember where. System terminated service. System D time dated service. So that's check checking the time. System time. Oh, there's a whole bunch. You know what? There was a whole bunch of red ones in there. Now there's, and they said uh, not found and all this stuff are not there, you know. They're not there anymore. And there's hardly any red stuff. So that update really fixed things up. <clears throat> Unless they were in this application section. Let's look and see. Oh, no, these are applications you could add to it. Oh, now it doesn't show there is any. Oh, I think if we do that, they'll show up. Reload it. That might take a while. It's some 
applications that are, I think, just add-ons, I guess, or for a uh, cockpit here, what we're using here, this remote admin. Here. What is that that keeps coming up? I guess if you click on that, it'll go back to the main page. I don't know if that'll interrupt that. If I move from it, so I'll wait because it looks like it's going to work. <coughs> but uh, this is a pretty good uh, app here. It's got the stuff you need. I'd like to have some more stuff, but uh, uh, it's pretty good. Oh, now that's taken forever. I'm going to click on dashboard because I want to know what it is. Oh, okay. Okay, I, I don't remember. I didn't remember what that did. Okay, CPU, memory, network, I/O. So it's just a graphic deal, just like when you first get here. Oh, and then that one is. <clears throat> I think I interrupted that. I'm not going to do it again. Uh, yeah. Okay. Now I see what's what. <clears throat> Software updates. There's only two. Two Java things. Both of them are bugs. See the little bug bugs, bug fix. I'm going to leave those alone because that way I'll know that they, I'll know for sure that my updates are working not tomorrow when I look at it. <coughs> and, um, okay, now that we're getting, I'm going to get in the terminal. I'm going to, I think you just type MC to start M yeah midnight commander. I was trying. I was thinking about this the other day. I'm really glad I installed this. This helps a lot. But uh, twin panel file manager. Look, it's, it reminds me a lot of uh, Total Commander, the original Windows Commander, the old original Windows Commander. Uh, uh, before Microsoft sued them, made them rename it to Total Commander. But well, but I I got it in Windows 3.1. I was running Windows 3.1 when I got it, and it looked. Uh, a, bit like this I mean it looked a lot like it still looks today but the colors were more like that blue I mean, it was like I think there was some of that green in there too but uh, <clears throat> let's see this is in the root directory so I have a just a few files I saved in there I can't remember doing that now oh when I was yeah commands to update yeah I tried that I did uh, DNF clean all when I first wouldn't boot I thought well maybe I just need to clean it up and start run the updates again I did run that it didn't help immediately though and oh and commands to install F XFCE desktop and uh, all that then DNF list text that would be the installed apps but uh, let's see <coughs> <coughs> oh I know <coughs> That reminded me. <clears throat> so let's get over, get in another window here. And uh, Fedora 29. Log into XFCE desktop. Okay, let's see. Doesn't seem to be what I'm looking for. <clears throat> I was looking for the page where I got those commands. Maybe it's in Fedora 28 or something. Yeah, that's just where you download Fedora with the XFC desktop already on it. <clears throat> As another non root user, quite sure. I think I ended up, that might be some of what I used to get. Oh, no, no. That, I'm not quite sure what that's in there for. Okay, let's see. This is it. 
install the XFCE desktop. So I ran this command here. And then to make it work, you got to run this command. And then you type start X. But I want to be able to have the boot screen. Now, where is all that information about the boot screen? Maybe it's there. No, that's not it. <clears throat> or is it? Maybe I need to pay attention here. No, that's just spins. Okay. There, that might be it. Multi-user. Multi-user with XFCEs. It's not it either. This is older information that's using yum instead of DNF. I remember that it was uh, <clears throat> the thing I'm looking for was uh, let's go here and let's see how do you uh, is it F3 or just three? Oops, must be F3. Nope, didn't do it forgotten what did you do to view a file you don't just hit enter I don't know what that did it tried to do something though well that's an ODT can't view that I copied that over there I guess for some reason but uh, you're not gonna be able to view an ODT on that machine I don't have open office in there I guess that's why F3 didn't do anything. 3 or F3. Oh, okay. Error. Command not found. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so. Yeah, I think F3 is. Yeah, see now, that's F3 will open it up in the default text, text editor viewer. Oh, that's what I ran. DNF clean all. Then I did DNF update. So that's my. Uh, so it all went, you know, no problems. And uh, then it didn't help my. Didn't fix it. Yeah, that's the apps list. I did a complete apps list. Installed apps list at some point there. I think I made those folders just so I'd have them. And, uh, well, I showed that earlier, but var www is where your website is. Well, HTML is where you put your website files on Fedora. On Debane, you put it in var www, I think, if I remember right. If you don't put them in the right folders, they won't show up on the Internet. Uh, depending on you know how this this just how the default of Apache web server gets configured by default, and I didn't do anything with the CGI event or those. It was just got in there. Now those, that's free Webalizer. That is a little web app I have installed on my website. I believe, maybe I don't MS Free Ping. I don't know. That's an those are both images though. But I didn't. Uh, I just put stuff in uh, HTML, so that might be like a temp file or, or that actually got put in there automatically or something. But uh, let's see, how do you exit F10? Now you're back to the terminal. <coughs> so um, let's see if some of that stuff is.
see if there's anything. I don't know where I've put the information. Maybe I didn't put it in Fedora. Maybe I put it in uh, Linux desktops or something. Top backgrounds. Let's see. I don't think I would have put it in the software set. I, I try to organize this stuff as best as I can. Sometimes over time, I think I, I think in different ways. You know, I don't think of doing it the same way. There we go. Let's see. XFCE. Well, there's where I was searching. There's a switching desktop environments. Okay, that's the same thing, but that's, I think the other one might have been for Fedora 28. So let's put that in Fedora 29. Put it there. Okay. It does work, but um, it does not work on the Fedora 28 server. Yeah, I, I would have said that too if I hadn't figured out, found what I found. Okay, so uh, still not finding a mate. I don't. Maybe this is where. Oh, that's where I was a minute ago. I think. This is a little older. Now, the one thing that you can do, and that's how I did it, really how I did it, but my Fedora 14 system, I already had, <clears throat> you know, well, Genome 2 up and running. Um, and then I installed, uh, I just saw, you know, group with group installs, you can install, you know, it's not hard to install like Apache Web Server and uh, if you say like SSH and stuff with a group install command. So you could... If that's all you wanted, you could do that. If you want some pretty complicated stuff, you might want to stick with the server installer. But um, as much trouble as I had getting these desktops up and running this time, I thought I already knew how to do it, but it's changed some. Uh, and I haven't, well, I, I, I mean, like I said, it runs when you type start X, but. Um, it's. Uh, you don't get the graphic bootloader and uh, I'm trying to remember let's see okay that's just that same one just going to click on the, each one and see. Well, let's don't click on every one of them. Yeah, spins, we don't. I think that's my old, yeah, that's my old one where I did it in Fedora 23. It's not exactly the same anymore. So I thought I was kind of ready to go. And there's Mate Desktop. Same basic thing as the other commands, but... Uh, Thing is, when you type StartX, you, start you always get XFCE. 
even though I've ran this, I have made an XFCE on there. That says Fedora 23. Is that for Fedora 23? Doesn't say. Oh yeah, it is Fedora 23. So I'll leave that. Well, this is yeah. So it's basically the same command. Um, maybe. Uh, but um, there is one thing missing, and that's the. Yeah, and here's the Fedora 28 one. This same website has it for each version. It's a little hard to find it when you just want to find it right quick. But uh, yeah, that's uh. Oh, here we go. I think this is it. No, dang it. That's just all of them. Um. Yeah, uh, I think I, I like I said I try my best to have this stuff organized in folders so I can find them again, and then I can't find them when I want to. Um, Fedora. I know it was Fedora. Oh, Plymouth. Plymouth or Plymouth. There we go. <laughs> See, now that's Plymouth. I know that. P-L-Y-M-O-U-T-H. So Plymouth and Plymouth is the same thing. Okay. That's probably supposed to be called um, Plymouth. Then. <coughs> so I think what I need to do, but I still may be better off because like Cockpit, that got installed automatically. You know, I started from the, I used the Fedora 29 net install, and I just installed the basic with a, uh, I installed Apache Web Server, SSA, FTP for you know for SSH and F FTP, and uh, and uh, <coughs> the default is to install the cockpit remote admin, and I'm gonna let that do that. And then I clicked on a couple of things like you know SSL and all that stuff supports secure websites, you know, and stuff, and. Um, Door Linux install Plymouth bootloader. All right. Let's see. That is video. You don't want a video while I'm making a video. Here we go. There we go. Those are themes, but. Okay. How to change the boot theme. Okay, I'm not wanting to do that right now. 29, 28, 27, NVIDIA, restore Plymouth. Okay. Before NVIDIA, oh, well, I'm not doing any of that. Okay. They might, I just got to thinking, though, they might okay, set default theme. First, you need to know what the themes are. Okay, now this might be getting us somewhere. Um, well, that's not in. I was didn't want to save that. Um, let's see. Select all tabs. I'll just have to. That's the way you have to do it now. Dora Linux. I think that's how I want it. Okay, now. Well, I can just remove that bookmark. There we go. Door documentation. That about have been where I was trying to go. That one might be useful. Well, I, well, yeah, this looks like the kind of page I was looking
kernel mode setting drivers to work best. There are not kernel mode drivers available for all hardware yet. We see the graphical splash screen before the drivers are generally available. Add VGA so and so to the kernel grub command line. Oh. This uses VESA frame buffer. I don't know what that means. I, that's from the olden days. <laughs> Speaking of Linux, of all the days of my Linux ex were experience back in the 05 to whatever, first three to four or five years, I had to use that a lot. Anyway, the VESA drivers, you had to use them because the uh, that's, uh, well, I'm going to get off on the sidetrack, but that's what worked. With the older machines, you could use the VESA drivers and they would boot. Otherwise, they wouldn't. Because the software was too new for the machines I had. Whatever. Uh, this is not these machines that I'm trying to do this on are not that old I think they may have uh, I was wondering if they've dropped support though because they are older on the newer versions of Fedora this is not the page I was looking for and I'm wondering just how old this is, actually. But it is good information. Even I still have old machines that I mess around with sometimes. So. Doesn't say that what version it's talking about. Doesn't look like there's any more about Plymouth in there. I think that's it. Or Plymouth. I call it Plymouth because. <coughs> Broken on a press install. Why? Just last, just last summer. Door Oh, I see. I've seen those three dots and thought something was wrong, and then it. Well, that's really just a. Yeah, so that's what's going on when you see those three dots. I keep going, what in the world? Okay, so uh, I'm wondering now. Seems like on the server I see those three dots. Maybe it is a boot. boot uh, Okay, so they're thinking it's themes. So I may, I may have been. Uh, I thought I, I just thought maybe I didn't have enough, you know, the right things installed. Those uh, videos might be helpful for me, but I'm, like I said, not. So maybe changing themes that page up first one of the first pages I found about themes I just kind of skipped over it 
But anyway, the, what, what I was going to say originally when I discovered Plymouth before, I don't think Fedora used to use it. They used to use something else. And it had this big mouth icon, you know, and that's why I thought it was supposed to be called Plymouth. How old is this? This is about you've been to. I'm not going to even mess with that one. Okay, so, uh, yeah, how to change the animation. That might be pretty interesting. Okay. Oh, this is changing the theme right here. Oh, this is the one. Okay. So we're in the terminal over here now. This is the one you usually see. That's a balloon blowing up. A, a hot air balloon is what's supposed to be like a big, those big ones you ride in. That's what it's been in Fedora for a long. I never knew what it was for years. Okay, it sets the default theme. I never change it, you know. Never, never have. Okay, let's do that. Uh, I don't know if those are separate commands or what. Sometimes they don't write this stuff the same. Okay, let's go back and make sure we got everything working here on this video. Yeah, getting audio. We're on the desktop. Okay. <coughs> List. Oh, okay. Charge, details, solar, spinifity, spinner, text, trabar. That's a couple more, I think. Yep, there's a few more than uh, I've got on there. Probably because I installed XFCE and made desktop. So those are the ones available. Can you also use the utility to check what is current Plymouth theme? All right. Doesn't want to. Var. What? Charge. Okay. Well, charge ain't working, so. Now then, set default theme, trabar R. Huh. I'm not going to do sudo because I'm in, I'm in, I'm logged in as root. It will rebuild your INET for the next time you reboot your system so you will see new theme in action. All right. More themes in the repos. Let's see. Spinner. Oh, okay. Spinify. Now, I remember that one. I like that. Spinifity. I liked that one. That's what was in Fedora 5 and 6 and so on, I think. I don't want no hot dog. Okay, now, which is the one they're saying? I might try the Spinifity. Which one did they say in that? I forgot which one they said w might work. I think they might have said Tribar. What is Tribar? I don't think there's a picture of Trabar. I'm going to kind of guess here that Trabar. Oh, that's that little blue bar, I guess. That shows you the progress. So let's do that one because uh, maybe it'll work. <laughs> I want one that works. That's the main thing. And then we can consider changing it. I should have uh, like to have had all that text saved. Oh, well, I can still do that. I'm going to save all that text when it gets done running. Actually, I better do it right now. There. Let's get this and save it in a file. <clears throat> I 
feels so weird because it just feels like I'm streaming, but then I keep thinking, oh, I'm I'm not streaming. Am I making it? What am I? Am I missing making a video? <laughs> yeah, you're just making a video. You're not streaming. You can't look over there at your laptop to see how it's going. There we go. Oh yeah, paste unformatted text. Let's change that to a big enough text for me to read. Another list of things to do. <sighs> My finger slipped. Another uh, of things to do. Let's see. Yeah. Is fix this to I never I used to know I used to know how to set that to the default uh, you know tech font size that I wanted and I can't I can't remember how to do it and I can't find where to do it I'm just gonna put it in Fedora 29 Yes, I want text. I'll leave it open until I'm done here. Oops. Okay, it's done. Now, <clears throat> so I guess I'll close that. I'm going to go ahead and try a reboot. But I won't do it from here. I'll get on the camera and go over there and do it over there. Okay, we'll have to log in on the actual console over here. Let's see if just reboot does it. Yep, it sure does. Some sometime well, some versions of Fedora you have to put in reboot now. Or it won't do it. It'll it'll sometimes it'll do nothing, or sometimes it'll squawk at you and say you gotta you gotta give it a parameter. <clears throat> See, I've got three kernels now plus the rescue. Or nineteen something something something. There it is, little blue bar. Row twenty nine. I'm just this, I won't hit the. Uh, usually I like to hit the keys and watch you know all the text coming up, but I saw that last time. So let's just see how the graphical thing does. I want to see if we're going to get a. A boot, uh, a login, a graphical login screen. That's what I'm looking for. If it does that and then just goes back to the command line, then I will not have gotten what I really want. But I did see it. The page I couldn't find, I never did find that page. It told you all, you know, it told you how to do Plymouth, and it said alternatively you could install a different kind of bootloader, graphic bootloader logon screen. Ah. Evidently, that's what I'm going to have to do. Maybe um, that is actually what's done on a regular, you know, graphic system. Not sure. Let's see. Um, I'm instead of logging in as, um, you know, root user, log in as <coughs> regular user, which is. <coughs> Uh, what I would most usually do, unless I was, uh, <clears throat> you know, if I was going to log into the graphic user interface.
Whoops. Start X should start up. And I'm glad it's been doing the starting up uh, XFCE. I just realized, oh, look. We got a little graphic thing. But see, I want to see that from the beginning. New session or logout or what? Oh, default. I think you just click on it. You don't want a new session. That'd be a new user. There was something that kind of came up below that. I don't know if it's taking its time. Create a new session. Last accessed. Okay. Maybe taking its time. I'm not sure. Ow. My neck popped. Yeah, when you move your mouse around, there's something comes up at the bottom, and I can't quite figure out what causes that. Oh, there it is. Create a new session. What happens when you do that? Choose a name for the new session. I don't think I want to do that. I don't know what it would be. Well, let's do it. I really don't know what, what the heck this is about. Getting in doesn't seem to do anything. Right, I'll confuse myself and I'll have two dawn sessions. And I won't know which one's which. But I'm wondering if that could make it start working right. So I'm glad to go ahead and try that. There it goes. Is it the via? XFCE works fine. I don't think I ever made it into uh, um, <clears throat> mate, but I just now realized something. Without having that graphic login screen, you don't have a place to change your desktop. And so the default is, you know, the default is is XFCE. So uh, probably in here somewhere you could. Uh, Machine's not real fast on Fedora 29, so you got to give it a little time to get booted up. I think we got the mail reader and some things like that by installing the desktop. But, um, got FileZilla, and that's showing updates. ARFB. I can do a remote desktop. Now that I've got it like that, I'll do that. <clears throat> do the remote desktop. Stopped at the wrong place. Okay, so I think it, yeah, zero to one fifty three, I think. Yep. Yeah. There we go. So, <clears throat> again, I better double check, make sure on desktop. Okay, so, so here is our uh, XFCE desktop. We've got desktop sharing icon, firewall icon, to the to DNF update that showed the two updates a minute ago when I was on in the camera where you couldn't really see. <coughs> <coughs> uh, 
I guess I better get a cough drop. And I also better quit before too long. <clears throat> I've got it working, and I have my server online again, so I'm happy. But um, I started looking through the apps that are on here. Mail Reader. A bunch of the, these are all apps that, uh, you know, wouldn't be here except for our, me installing it. These just came with XFCE desktop. I might have clicked on like something, you know. I, well, I don't remember. I did it in the command line, so no, I think they just came with the desktop. If I was doing it in the graphic user interface, I might have clicked on some, you know, XFCE apps or something. I think this is just what you get with X. And you got Thunderbird, got Tiger VNC Viewer. Now I know I installed KRFB and stuff. It's just pretty much a basic. I mean, it's a usable system on its own now. You know, it's more than just a server, and I've, I think I put LibreOffice on there on purpose. I might have did that during the initial install. There was a few things you could do on the initial install. But, uh, yeah, I was thinking about the boot options is what I was thinking about. where you could set the preferred, um, I don't want to change it, actually, I want it to be <clears throat> XFCE, because Mate, I only tried installing Mate because I thought maybe that would make the graphical bootloader work. But it didn't. Login window. Got to be root in order to yeah, got to be rude in order to do anything with that. That's why you don't need to log in as root. Anytime you need to do something as root user, you, it'll always ask you, almost always ask you. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah background boot screen I went through all this before trying to get it to show up allow manual login hide the user list don't want to hide it username Dawn yeah I like that that's the way I want that it may have been what I just did a while ago when I typed Dawn in that window and settings HID, H, uh, high DPI support. Oh, okay, that's auto. Host name on, accessibility options on, battery power off, keyboard, clock, quick menu. <coughs> I didn't see all that stuff in there, but. Other monitors, bottom left. Picture to show on the bottom left of the login window. Oh, picture, like pic Oh, okay, well, that's fine, wherever. Oh, I see. I have put my own picture in there before. <coughs> Not with XFTE, but with me. Other monitors. If you have multiple monitors, uh, use uh, the use or list is placed on the active one and the picture on the others. Ah, okay. Background. Yeah, I'm not going to bother with any of the rest of it. Let's see. <coughs> Boot. Bluetooth and SE Linux troubleshooter.
desktop desktop background appearance session and startup isn't that where I was just now was can't remember now no this is different <clears throat> display choose your own login automatically save session on logout splash none yeah I don't like any of the ones XFCE has this is just for XFCE oh okay yeah application auto start I don't know if I'll, well, I'll leave it alone. <clears throat> I don't want it going. I don't like when things go to sleep. I don't like that at all. Quick refresh view. I think I've already been in here because the screensaver is not turned on. Yeah, I must have already been in here. mate settings I don't want any of that extra stuff running for mate <clears throat> unless I'm in mate I do want the volume control to show up yeah it's not up there okay that's all I want oh that's up in here session Oh, okay. I used to turn those kinds of things on. If you have a, you know, if you're don't, not running an old slow machine, that can help things work faster if they already have the basic stuff running in the background. That would make that stuff run in the background. <coughs> Okay, so that's not, still not, uh, you know, graphic user interface desktop chooser. Um, input method. Graphic. Settings editor, settings manager. Pretty sure. I think the settings editor is more of a like a manual editor. <clears throat> this is probably for like all the settings. Yeah. I don't think there's anything on here for editing the boot menu you no know, graphic app for that anyway login window that is exactly what I was wanting what happened was it not through resizing or what there oh that's the one I was in just a while ago and <coughs> let's go in there again Yeah, that's where I was a while ago. So we don't want to do that again. Settings editor. That was the one I said, I think. Yeah, this is what I thought it was. Yeah, see, now you, you know, you can't just. If you can't figure out an easier way to do it in the graphic user interface, you can go and check and uncheck boxes in here, but. <clears throat> This is not the one where you have to actually hand type stuff in. I thought this was going to be one where you have to. I think you can type some of these in. But this is more advanced. You really need to learn what tech you're doing. I've done a few little things in the this kind of deal before, and sometimes it works, helps, does what I want, and sometimes I just 
I may end up messing something out. So messing something up. Like um got a search there. X I don't even know what that is right there. Let's see, X settings. Oh that's probably for the <coughs> display settings. Can't search though. Searcher doesn't work. desktop app finder keyboard shortcuts now that I would would do <laughs> I don't need him to do that right now but he's darn I like these cop these cough drops are great but they got the weirdest gooey stuff that gets on your tongue Okay, now. Okay, so none of this. I mean, I'm, I'm. You don't. When, when you have the greeter, mood screen. I'm trying to think of all the different names that might be called. <laughs> mood screen. Screen saver display. Okay. I already looked under boot. There's two things, Bluetooth and SC Linux Troubleshooter. Let's look at that because what if that's the reason <laughs> it's not coming up? I don't suppose I found that while I was on this machine. I guess I could open up the... I have to wait now. The SC Linux troubleshooter hasn't opened up yet. Here's one good thing about just making a video. You don't have to worry about whether or not you've lost your connections and all that stuff. I might set the default screen to that. Well, let's just leave it like it is tonight. I never did open up. Doesn't look like. <clears throat> um, oh, I was thinking about opening up the web browser and seeing if uh, I possibly had found... You know what? I'm gonna save that. I know I, I know I wanted to be able to get back to that. I don't think I did any searching in here, though. No studies installed or run. That I saw that link about what do you what do you share? It's kind of weird because it seems like I guess that's more intrusive though because they don't click that by default. Backlog crash reports. Crash is the only thing I want them to know about. Well, right now, I don't want to fool with that. <clears throat> um, I don't even have my little search bar up there. I forgot what it was. Oh, bookmarks. See if that'll open up the bookmarks. Yeah, there we go. Control-Shift. Uh, 
Oh, I think. Yeah, I didn't even save the bookmark in here. Yeah. Okay, so. Any research I did on that would be done on my machine, like I thought. I've already clicked on every single one of these, haven't I? Oh, I was going to look in my file manager. See if I saved the page that has that on there. It was a Fedora documentation page. And it was... Um, Boot screen animation. I just did that. Server commands. Yeah, that's the commands I use. Made desktop. XFCE desktop. Well, let's look at the mate desktop one maybe it, I saved something in there to, I think it's just the terminal output I just saved it as an ODT instead of a text file because I guess I was in a hurry or whatever yeah that's the terminal output so I didn't ever run that other command I know I didn't ever run the other command, but I was wondering if I saved it. I guess I could look at those masks. Don't look at the screenshots right now. I don't think that'll help. I just looked at them earlier today, I think. Switching desktop environment. Did I go there yet? Oh, this might be it. Here we go. Install the desired, desired Now then. Alternatively, install switch desk and switch disk UI packages. Yeah, this is what I was think looking for. I don't know how come I that is saved somewhere, but oh there we go. Door Linux project. I'm going to put that in. Uh, not that one. I'll put it in there. That's where I expected to find it. And then you'll have this right here. Maybe that'll help. See? Oh, and you can... Oh. Well, I want it to be graphic. I think that would give you a... Uh, oh, then you have to type. Type in what you're going to do. Okay, yeah, I don't want to have to type in. I'm trying to get away from having to type all this stuff in. 
I don't know. The thing I don't know is they're showing the that looks like the genome logon screen. So I don't know. Well, well I'm gonna try it because everything else I've done hasn't worked. It won't hurt. I'd already closed that uh remote admin but oh wait I can just go do it on the I've got remote desktop I'll just open up a terminal over here do it over here logged in is done so I have to go uh, issue I actually made it. I was making lots of mistakes, but I actually got it. Okay. There we go. Okay. <coughs> Regular terminal uh, app has more features than that remote terminal. Like you can save your work easier and stuff. You don't lose it doesn't roll away so quickly you know you can when you have a longer output you'll you'll have it um, okay do I want to install that 64 co kilobyte oh man I don't know if I got space for that now that's how fast things should be installing why does it install so slow on my little 28 system I mean, even small things like that take a long time on that Fedora 28 system. And that's showing it over a remote desktop. Hmm. That's something. Yeah, okay, so, some terminals you can say save output as, but this one's not one of them. So, um, there's actually more desktops. They're up at the top instead of down at the bottom the way I like them. Probably should have used a text editor. That app is a lot more resource hungry. Forgot to uh, make the text a little bigger. Okay, so well, we'll just see. It's called Switch Desk. We'll see if it comes up automatically. Terminal output. Yeah. Ah. I'm using my keyboard, but sometimes my fingers slip.
Okay. Now I'll have a record of that. You close the terminal now. And let's see. Yeah, I'm going to get on the camera and go over there and do it over there. <coughs> Well, let's go ahead and close that desktop session first. That way it doesn't, uh, sometimes the, these desktop, remote desktop apps kind of want to crash when you... Close them from the other end like that, you know. Okay, so. <clears throat> now, I'm just going to reboot it. I think you click on your name. Yeah, well, let's see. Shut down, log out. I think. Yeah, log out. Then you can. Do restart. <clears throat> Let's see if we get welcome to a, a graphic screen now. Still may not. Still may have to type start X. We'll see. Assuming it, I think, I don't think there was anything you had to set up. I think you just install it. Didn't look, I didn't see anything. It said, you know, after you install it, run some commands or edit a config file or anything. <clears throat> Either way, I uh, think I want to quit after, after this. It'd be nice if to know that that was working. Okay, so we got the blue bars, and if you hit the I any I think any key, but I usually hit the up or down arrow keys, and then I can watch the. That's always it's it when you especially when you're trying to get something working, it's good to watch the uh, terminal output while it's booting up to see what's working, what's not. You know, even if you don't have errors, you just see what's happening. You know, you might learn, especially if the text was bigger, where I could actually read it just barely read it if it stops for a minute okay something failed hardware monitor okay we know that already be nice to just turn that off probably does slow well it didn't seem to slow it down any something my fedora 28 system the one i'm stream, uh, streaming recording on oh didn't do it <laughs> okay so we still don't get that oh no, not, not root on Now, maybe I will get that little graphic chooser this time. That's what I'm wondering. Oh, now we have default and done. Either one of them is going to be done, though. So adding that didn't really do anything for us. But I'm going to go ahead and go. I'm using my up and down arrow keys to go through that. Yeah, there's not going to be any other. Right clicking out here doesn't do anything. Right clicking in there made it go to default. Now it doesn't want to. Oh, there you go. You can roll your mouse wheel. There you go. If you double click on it, then it does it. You just went straight in there. <clears throat> it was pretty quick. So there's still something not working. Um, 
to do, you know, that's get, that gives you the regular graphic. KDE wallet. I'm not going to do that right now. Gives you the regular graphic uh, login screen. It may be that the server has this stuff disabled because I, you know, the instructions tell you to do what I uh, use Stardex to get in there. And that's fine. I can leave it like that. Uh, problem occurred. Let's see. Let's see what that might be. Might be what I just installed. What's that? Something that looks like a keyboard up there. Doesn't have any uh, anything in the ABRT window there. Drag R2 updates. So that happens sometimes in the other Fedora, Fedora 28 and 2. That right there is what I'm wondering. I don't want to do those updates right now. Emoji choices. Preferences. For what? Isn't that that thing I just installed? iBus preferences. Hmm. English. Emoji. Don't install. They used to be called emoticons. Now they call it emoji. Why? They're emoticons. They've always been around. They're nothing new. They're no, nothing to get excited about. No, I don't want any emoji anything. Can you turn them off? <laughs> well, I want the normal emoticons. So that's all that is. I don't know why I, I don't know why that is there now and it wasn't before. Next input mes message super space. I guess that's the space bar. I just like what is that? Now I think I know. It's not anything I even want to, to be there. What's that? Desktop sharing disconnected. Oh, that's running by default now. Actually, right now that's good. If it would keep doing that, then all I have to do is log into it. Well, first I'd have to save the password. I'd set up the key ring so that it would save the password. I really don't want it that way, though. I mean, if I set it up and then I forget it, it'll stay that way. And I don't want that to be on on my server of all things, you know. Okay, so um, that's, I'm going to, what's this? Oh, that's the desktop sharing. Actually, let's go ahead and make sure it's turned off when I reboot. I don't think it would be. I'll just do that so that it won't be enabled until I want it enabled. Okay, now I'm going to reboot again. And I just want it to be in the command line, you know, to be. Uh, I don't want it. I don't need the desktop running. Just work it harder for nothing. I used to, I, for I, my Fedora 23 system, I couldn't stand it. I always wanted that desktop running just in case I wanted to click over there and use it. I didn't want to have to log in. <laughs> but it was stupid because all it did was just make the machine work harder all the time. Uh, I still didn't have to reboot it once. Ever. I'd run it three months without rebooting it, but... It really was silly. But I had it. It worked it, just like it was supposed to. I, I did all basically the same thing. Uh, ran those. That's where I found those commands that I used to get uh, 
XSE and Mate desktop installed. I did basically the same thing, and uh, it just worked when I did that. This time, um, it's not not playing nice. That's fine, but I think I would like that other splash screen a lot better. But that's better than those three dots. I hated those three dots. I didn't know what they were about. I didn't understand. Now I realize I think they were there just because I just skimmed over what I saw about it, but I think it was sort of a fallback thing to show uh, that would show if the I, the, the uh, theme you chose, and it still could be the theme. I'm, I'll change the theme again because what if this theme is only half working? You know, maybe the – that looks to me like that theme I changed was just for the splash screen, but it could have been also for the login screen. I don't know. So. But that is the normal, it's a little different looking, but it is the normal thing you see. That's what you see in the newer versions of Fedora. It's just it's a lot wider, taller. I mean, not wider, taller, a lot taller. And maybe it, there's, I'm sure there's settings for that. But uh, So let's go ahead and get back in the... Uh, I don't. I was gonna say I'll get in the remote, you know, admin and s s make sure. Well, I saw that it was up, so I don't really need to do that. I'll just go to the uh, website monitor, make sure that it's up. I think that's the one that said try back in a little bit. I think Uptime Robot was working. No, this is one that wasn't working, but now it is. Okay. So now Dawn Songs is okay. Code out biz is working. Oh, I can look over here. That's, yeah, they're all green. I saw the red in there and it made me think. I wasn't sure. <laughs> but yeah, I see now. They're green. But yeah, they're uh, Dawn Songs. Uh, all of them are working. See, I can see that okay, and then I know. <laughs> I see words. I don't read colors. And pictures, I read words. So, um, that's good. Let's see, I was going to see if there was a time or a date or something. Get a screenshot of it. <clears throat> okay, and it says it's been up. It hasn't even noticed it was down. Those quick reboots don't always get, you know, show up because this one checks it ever. Actually, I think I changed it to every 10 minutes or something because it was sending me errors too often this one thought i'd already i guess I, oh yeah i haven't logged in yet <coughs> this is the one that checks it every 30 minutes so it should be up i'm not sure why a while ago showed to be down <coughs> okay <coughs> stays there for a minute but actually, they've all been up. Um, they should have all been up just as long as bishopco.com because nothing's changed in any of these. So that kind of stuff, I don't know. If they weren't reachable for real, then I'd, I'd like to fix that. But I don't. The only thing I know I can imagine is the forwarding. So it might change. <clears throat> well, the one thing I've started wondering about was... <coughs> I put it. I, I went. I, talk, I kind of wonder, looked over it in, in some videos. GoDaddy, ha, GoDaddy has added a URL URL shortener service, and I don't. My URLs aren't too long anyway. Even when they're like when you go to dawnsongs.com, that's not long. Bishopco.com, Web98 Index HTML. So I don't. I didn't want it. I was afraid it would actually add more seek time to finding my site. You know. Everything it has to do before it gets to your site adds to your load time. And I was afraid I'd get errors, but it could be. I cause when I was trying to set up my DNS server, I kept having trouble with it working one second and not working the next. And I would get that error saying about from that URL shortener. That's how I figured it out that it was there. I kept getting that error 
it was talking about a URL shortener. I was like, what? I don't use, I don't use that. <coughs> and what I'm thinking is it may be taking over the ones that are forwarded. And Jack, one time it works and, then, and the next time it doesn't. And so if I should, I guess I keep thinking I should go and set it up. This one, you know, alt will set up because all these others are also forwarded. The only one that's not is bishopco.com. Bishopco. Well, uh, no, bishopco.biz is not forwarded. It goes straight there. But dawnsongs.com. Oh, I don't have. Where's the others? Psalm 68 and all that. I don't even see them. Do I really only have them in here? I don't see it at all. One of these I can add a bunch, I think, to, and one I can't. I think this is the one I can only add three. I don't have the Psalm 68 in there. I might need to go ahead and do that. <clears throat> I need something to tell me if they're... Uh, I thought I had them. I think what I ended up doing is taking Psalm 68 out and putting US.2 in there. <clears throat> or something, but anyway, yeah, okay, so we're good now, <clears throat> website's up, just have a loud machine running, loud. well, I don't know, it may not be, since it's further away from me, my bed than the other machine, by about two feet, with boxes and things in between them, uh, <clears throat> and the one on the right side, then there's a, well, it's a big old cardboard box with, uh, see it but over here on the right side right there is the machine behind the white one here the, the TRS-80 and to the right of that is uh, that's my cup that red thing is a two cardboard boxes that I set up like a <coughs> you know like a cabinet <laughs> and then I put a cloth over it like a well, like a little blanket of a thing over, and of course it of, of that. What I was trying to say is that will absorb sound. So I'm getting a lot of ghosting there on a, but um, and then there's curtains behind it. So <clears throat> should uh, well, I can tell that it's uh, absorbing a lot of that sound I, because it's. I really noticed it when I first turned it on because I wasn't used to it being on, but it uh, you don't hear any echo and it doesn't get amplified by hitting some hard surface or anything. You, know? <clears throat> you don't hear it reflecting around a lot. And then, like I said, right next to it, just within two inches of it, there's a cardboard box full of uh, documentation, books, and software for the TRS-80. And then my routers and stuff are all on top of that, so... <clears throat> Lots of sound uh, deadening and reflection in right there next to it. So, and then it's stacked on top of it with other things. So <laughs> that helps with vibration. <laughs> okay. So, uh, well, I'm very glad I've got that done. I was worried once I fiddled around for all day with uh, trying to get OBS Studio to stream and finally woke up and realized I should have just fixed this first and then did fiddle, fiddle with that. <clears throat> you know, all I have to do is what I'm doing, just make a video and then upload it later. Uh, but I was afraid I wasn't going to get it back online and working. I did get, I got to do everything that I had in mind to do to it, but it didn't, <clears throat> still didn't get me to where, I, <clears throat> I still don't know how I can log into Mate Desktop. I guess you might run a command that would say switch to the other desktop. That's what you'd have to do, I guess. I don't know. Stardex, you know, like a, a switch on Stardex command. That's probably what I'd have to do. Because <clears throat> I'm I, I'm sure that the default desktop is uh, XFCE. But that's actually what I want. I, I never intended to install Make Desktop. I just installed it kind of in desperation because I thought maybe it's got some settings in there. I was thinking all I need is settings, you know, manager, GUI settings manager to get that graphic user interface because I knew I had Plymouth installed and everything. 
<clears throat> but it could end up being something to do with the themes not working. I wouldn't have thought of that. <clears throat> Maybe if I choose another theme. So I guess I'll go back and research some more about the themes. Because I just skimmed, I really skimmed over that stuff. I thought, well, I'm not interested in themes right now. I'm not playing. I'm trying to make it work. But <clears throat> then I realized that they're saying that it doesn't log in. It doesn't work at all because of the themes are buggy. So <clears throat> there we go. Pay attention to your research when you're doing your research. So I'm going to go, and uh, tomorrow will be another day, and we'll see what we can get done tomorrow. All right, bye-bye.